Our species has scanned the night sky for countless years and pondered the possibility of life elsewhere. Galileo's affirmative response was honored last year on its 400th anniversary. With the aid of a brand new tool, the telescope, Galileo focused on the heavens and observed things that no one else had ever seen before. Hundreds of stars, mountains in the moon, and satellites in Jupiter. Since then, we've discovered more than 400 planets orbiting other stars, 100 billion stars in our galaxy, hundreds of billions of galaxies outside of our own, and even the faint radiation that serves as the Big Bang's echo. Scientists now believe that even this lavish census of the universe may be as outdated as Galileo's five-planet model of the cosmos that he acquired from the ancients. Scientists have gathered data showing that only 4% of the universe, planets, stars, galaxies and all other matter in space represent what we have traditionally regarded to be the real cosmos. Hi guys, welcome back to Beyond Unknown. Today we'll be taking a look at why NASA keeps receiving messages from this megastructure in space. Make sure to stick till the end of this video as we have a lot to cover. Also don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like today's video, it helps us a long way. One of the great mysteries of the universe is the existence of fast radio bursts. We've gained a tremendous deal of knowledge about these powerful millisecond pulses since their discovery. However, there is still a lot we don't know, such why they happen. Since galaxies are billions of light years away, we know where the powerful bursts come from. These bursts, also known as FRBs, have been used by us to locate material that was lost but was not otherwise accessible. How do we get to this point? where teams of astronomers from all over the world are vying to solve their mystery? The renowned Parkes radio telescope is known by its indigenous name, Murray-Yang, which was used by the team led by British-American astronomer Duncan Lorimer in 2007 to find the first FRB. The researchers discovered a pulse that was so intensely bright that many astronomers were skeptical it was real. However, the mystery didn't end there. For astronomers, radio pulses are a wonderful gift Astronomers can determine how much total gas a burst went through on its way to Earth by observing when it enters the telescope at various frequencies. To have originated in the Milky Way, our galaxy, the Lorimer explosion, would have had to travel through far too much gas. The group came at the conclusion that it was from a galaxy billions of light years away. It must have emitted a tremendous amount of energy for it to be so bright and visible from such a distance. It emitted energy equivalent to what our Sun would have in 80 years, in only a single moment. Which galaxy the FRB from Lorimer's team originated from was simply a hunch. Moriang suggested to precisely pinpoint where the FRBs are. For another team to achieve this breakthrough, several years would pass. We require a radio interferometer, which is an array of antennas dispersed over a distance of at least a few kilometers to find the FRB in order to locate the position of the burst. When the signals from the telescopes are combined, an image of the FRB is created with sufficient precision to show not just the galaxy from which the burst came, but in certain cases, to pinpoint the exact location inside the galaxy where it was produced. The source that released several bursts was where the first FRB was discovered. With the help of the enormous Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico, the first burst was found in 2012. A small galaxy located roughly 3 billion light years away was found to be the source of subsequent bursts that were discovered by the very large array in New Mexico. The second FRB host galaxy was discovered by a team in 2018. This galaxy was fairly ordinary, quite different from the preceding galaxy. A dozen more bursts from a variety of galaxies, both massive and small, young and old, have now been localized by teams all over the world. One unsolved mystery is why FRBs can originate from such a diverse variety of galaxies. On April 28, 2020, the SWIFT telescope, which is circling the Earth, was unexpectedly hit by a burst of X-rays. Within milliseconds of the X-rays and in general direction of that star, two telescopes, the KAIMI in Canada and the SNARE-2 array in the United States, found a very powerful radio burst. This proved that such neutron stars might be the origin of the FRBs we observe in distant galaxies. Astrophysicists were given crucial hints about how nature may produce such intense bursts by the simultaneous discharge of radio waves and X-rays. If this is the cause of FRBs, however, we do not yet know for sure. The CHIME telescope is now developing a detailed catalogue that will soon be accessible to other astronomers. It has by far the largest sample of bursts collected to date. The construction of an array at Caltech 
by a group with the sole purpose of looking for FRBs has begun. Australian sports are also very active. For ASCAP, we are creating a brand new burst detection supercomputer that will discover FRBs more quickly and locate sources farther away. The result will be a movie of the universe being created at a rate of 40 trillion pixels per second, thereby turning ASCAP into a high-speed, high-definition video camera. We'll be able to better examine and comprehend what causes these enigmatically powerful bursts of energy if we discover more bursts and more distant bursts. In just two months, a new FRB signal has buzzed nearly 2,000 times, raising a mysterious scenario. A repeated rapid radio burst source discovered the previous year was observed to produce an astounding 1,863 bursts over 82 hours for a total of 91 hours of observation. Because of this hyperactive behavior, scientists have been able to identify the source as well as the galaxy that is located in and how far away it is from Earth. The 500-meter Aperture Spherical Radio Telescope in China was used to discover the object, which has the designation FRB 2020-1124A. Astronomer Heng Zhu of Peking University in China is the lead author of a recent publication that describes the item. Being of right now, the overwhelming majority of the available data leads to a magneta, a neutron star with incredibly potent magnetic fields as the source of these types of FRB emissions. It appears to be a unique specimen if FRB 2020-1124A is in fact a member of the untamed kingdom of cosmic beasts. Astrophysicist Bing Zhang of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, said that these observations forced them to start over. More multi-wavelength observational operations are required to fully understand the nature of these objects, because it's too obvious that FRBs are more mysterious than we had previously thought. It's difficult to investigate most recorded eruptions, since they only occur once, let alone understand. Only a small number have been found to be recurring, which has at least enabled researchers to link them to their home galaxies. Next, a breakthrough happens in 2020. Astrophysicists have linked the phenomenon to magnetar activity after a quick radio burst was seen for the first time within the Milky Way. Another evidence of a rare repeater is the most recent exceptional FRB occurrence. Astronomers have the largest collection of polarized fast radio burst data from an FRB source thanks to FRB 2020-1124A, which has only been observed for a little less than two months. Light waves are oriented in three dimensions according to a process known as polarization. Scientists can learn about the environment that the light has gone through by evaluating how much that orientation has changed since the light left its source. An intense magnetic environment, for instance, is suggested by strong polarization. Astronomers were able to determine that the source is a magnetar thanks to the abundance of data that FRB 2020-1124A provided. But there was an irregularity. The way the polarization altered over time revealed that the magnetar's magnetic field strength and particle density were varying. However, there was also another oddity. Magnetars are a specific kind of neutron star made up of the cores of enormous stars that have collapsed due to their own gravity after running out of fuel to burn and exert pressure on the surrounding space. Such stars die young and quickly exhaust their fuel, ejecting their outer layers in a supernova as the core collapses. These young magnetars are believed to exist in areas where star formation is still taking place because of their short lifespan. After passing away at the end of their brief existences, stars produce new clouds of material that can conceive new stars. It's a lovely cosmic cycle of life. And that ends our episode. We hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and leave a comment down below with your own thoughts and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.